Good evening, everyone. First of all, wow. Take a look around. Take a look around at the love that's on this ball field. It is phenomenal. Thank you for joining us on this wonderful evening, uh, beautiful weather. Uh, I got home in time, thought I was at school all day. But you know, there was a couple of those times when I don't think Wrigley Field had nearly as many people as we have here today. But one thing that they had at Wrigley Field in later years, There will be no 
Only one day I hope I get to play you again. All the crap you gave me from third base, I know, for you, heaven has a place. Now you play with baseball's games. Your walk-up song should be Broken Wings. Marcus. neighbor kid, an adopted Wickershine, if you name my own mind. The family's asked me to say a few words about our friend Sean today, so I'm going to keep it like he would want it, short, like a miniskirt. <laughs> when I think of Sean and how he'd start something like this, I can't help but recall Ben Wickershine's wedding to his lovely wife, Tara. Right before Sean's best man speech, he told me, I'm just going to wing it. Knowing Sean, like we all did, this made complete sense. To start the speech, he thanked everyone for coming out today, kind of like what Ben just did, and then proceeded to say, I'd like to thank Jeff Wickershine for taking off work to be here today. <laughs> ben, Sam, and Sean's dad, Jeff, obviously wouldn't have missed the wedding of his firstborn son, but that was Sean. When I got to writing this eulogy, the only thing that came to mind was how awesome a person Sean was. And what could I say to convey that even though Sean was a little bit out in left field, he greatly touched many lives. Then, the movie Major League came to mind. In fact, the number 99 that clearly everyone identifies with Sean was no doubt inspired by that movie. So with that being said, I'd like to remember Sean's life by connecting to his favorite movie, Major League. I hope when you listen, you remember Sean's great events in your personal moments with him. Just a bit outside, Harry Doyle, played by Bob Uecker, said this quote early on in the movie. If there ever was a quote that reminded us of the person we're here to honor today, it's this one. Sean Wickershine was a great man, brother, uncle, cousin, friend, and teammate. Honestly, this list continued for a long time, much longer than you'd want me to, and if Sean was here, he'd say the same thing. He came from some strong roots. Jeff and Rhonda are excellent parents and would do anything for their children. They raised three outstanding young men. 
Sam has always been the most caring, willing to go the extra mile to help anyone in need. Ben has been my best friend since they moved back from Arizona when we were kids. We grew up playing many different games and tried to be the best people we could. Ben was a talented individual athletically and an even better person. He continually came through in the clutch when his team needed it, just like today. And then, there was Sean. He seemed to have something else. Little Wick, as we used to call him, always found a way to play with the big boys. It seemed that he was destined to be one of the best athletes that what Wick had ever seen. I found the competitive side of myself always hoping that Sean would be on my team when I played sports with the bigger shy boys. Not because I didn't think Ben or Sam were good, because they were, but because there was something different about Sean. I think Ben always let me have Sean on my team in games, partly because I wasn't as good of an athlete as him. But mostly, he did it because he wanted me to experience what it was like to have a younger brother, which I can honestly say Sean was. Enough about me and my connections, though. We need to get to the outside part of this speech. For all of you here today that know him, Sean was just a bit outside. He always had that joke that made you a little uncomfortable, but at the same time, laugh hysterically. Sean was the guy that would prank call your mother at 12.30 a.m. just because it seemed like a good idea at the time. He would wake you up in the morning by jumping on you and tackling you until you laughed uncontrollably. That was Sean. Wick was, Wick was the same person that many people couldn't wait to play on their team because of the leadership he had. If you were struggling, he was the first guy to give you crap, but at the same time, inspire you to be better. I've talked with a lot of people since his passing, and the one resounding thing that comes up is that Sean was just a bit different, a bit crazy, a bit caring, and quite a bit funny. In the world today, we could use a whole lot more of what Sean was, just a bit outside. At another point in the movie Major League, Bob Eucher's character says, so here is Rick Vaughn, the one they call the Wild. Growing up in a small town like many of us here did, can lead to many people knowing more about you than you seem to know about yourself. White Lake was no exception. Sean excelled at sports, leading many of his teams that he played on to victories. They might not have all been in the win column, but he helped people to be better and feel better about where they live, where they were from. Honestly, that led a lot of people to enjoy life that they were leading just a bit more. When he went on to college, it wasn't much different. Sean found a way to make connections. He introduced many of the people here to other great people from all parts of the U.S. Sean helped bring them together, bring us together. It's kind of wild when you think about it. I guess he was a wild thing. If it wasn't already evident to everyone that is here, I'm sure that a lot of you have seen pictures of Sean over the past week or so. I can honestly say that in every picture of Sean that I've seen, he always has the same grin, the same tongue sticking out smirk that everyone knew was him. The kid that showed his supreme confidence in who he was and what he was going to do. The kind of confidence that everyone wanted from a teammate, friend, and brother. And while we're on the topic of a wild thing, I'm sure every one of you has your, well, that was Sean's story. Most of them are probably something we shouldn't say here today, but something that I know I would love to hear from you later during the celebration. I guess I have one to add right now. At Sean Fred Tucker's wedding, during the rehearsal dinner, Sean, being the kid that he was, sat at the little kid's table. Even though everyone told him he didn't have to, he did anyway. While sitting there, he made it his personal mission to teach one of the other kids how to do the solid greeting while using hand gestures and sound effects. That was Sean, just in vision, everyone there laughing all the while he's doing this. Honestly, this is the celebration of many people's best friend. Another outstanding quote from Major League came from the actor playing Lou Brown, the manager of the Indians team. He says, Forget about the curveball, Ricky. Give him the heater. That quote's perfect for Sean, as he said it a bunch of times. He lived fast and played hard. He was part of many different teams. In college at Finlandia University, he played three sports, going continually from one sport to the next during his time up in the UP. From that, he made many friends that I have personally met and also played ball with, and I can say they are as good of people as they are athletes. And considering that most college teams like theirs consist of the best players on their high school teams, it's saying a lot. 
Given the heater also has another meaning. Sean always liked to have a good time during many of the times he spent with us here. He would always be the person that everyone was drawn to. I can't tell you the number of people that have texted, Facebooked, or called me recently to say, Hey man, sorry to hear about your friend. From what I remember, he was a great guy and fun to be around. People were drawn to Sean, like the new movie or hit song. Whenever he came around, you constantly just wanted more. The next quote relates to Sean from the catcher of the movie, Jake Taylor. At this point in the movie, Rick Vaughn, the pitcher, is lamenting giving up a long home run. That ball would have been out of a lot of parks, Jake Taylor said. Name one, Rick Vaughn said. Yellowstone? Even when things weren't the best, Sean had a positive attitude. He always had a way of helping other people deal with troubles they were having. He was a friend that anyone could turn to for advice and comfort. He showed that he cared. Honestly, if the circumstances were different today, Sean would find a way to keep people's spirits up. It might be by telling a joke, bringing them a beer with a smile, or tackling them and wrestling them into submission until they forgot about their troubles and just laughed. A great example of this was Sean's run into the White Lake softball tournament. He continually found ways to bring people together, and made that weekend one of the most enjoyable times for the community of White Lake. During another part of Major League, where a Sean-like hitter named Haywood comes up to the plate, the catcher, Jake Taylor, starts talking about what he's been doing over the past year until Haywood cuts him off and says, How's your wife and my kids? This comment would not be out of the realm of possibilities for Sean. He definitely was a jokester. Most of us can remember a time, or many, where Sean used his quick wits to turn a very awkward situation into an absolutely hilarious one. One of the most common places diseases wit come out was when Sean was on the ball field. He was the ultimate trash talker. In my personal experience, I noted that Sean wasn't your run-of-the-mill refuse linguist. He seemed to have a master's degree in it. Many a softball player from opposing teams gave him a double look as if to say, is this guy serious? But in reality, Wick was doing it all in good fun. After every game, it always ended in a handshake and a good game, nothing more. I know many of us here had two or three weeks of Sean each year. But I bet just like me, you looked forward to those weeks more than most holidays. He had that special something that was almost addictive. A personality unmatched by anyone else I know. Even though he isn't here with us today, all of us can find solace in the fact that he made us laugh. Made us keep wanting more. The perfect example of this was on one of his annual trips to Fall Creek, Wisconsin to play in a softball tournament. We had jerseys made and he wanted 99 and Vaughn on the back. While enjoying our time in the usual way, Sean decided that it would be a good idea to take a pair of glasses and put tape in the middle and cut the inside of the only Indian's hat in Eau Claire so that he could look just like the character portrayed by Charlie Sheen in the movie Major League. The rest of the weekend, <laughs> he played in costume, getting a rise out of everyone watching that day. Looking back on that weekend and many others spent with him, I can't help but shake my head and smile. Perhaps the hardest part of that is knowing that no one will be able to experience those anymore. With that said, remember those great times. Cherish those moments. Appreciate the people that Sean has brought together today. And most importantly, do what Sean would do and make someone laugh and feel better. Act just a bit outside. Number three. Number three. <laughs> I didn't want to do it too early.
First, I want to say, you have my sincere condolences and sympathies, Jeff and Rhonda, and Sam, and all of you from the Wickershire family. The ones we love remain with us, for love itself lives on. The cherished memories do not fade because a loved one's gone. The ones we love can never be more than a thought apart, for as long as there is memory, they live on in our heart. Jesus told his disciples one day, don't let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, not trust Him. Right now, it's a hard time to trust. You've lost a good friend. You've lost somebody you love very much. But the disciples were about to lose their leader, their Savior. And he said, uh, don't let your hearts be distraught. He didn't say not to grieve. He didn't say not to cry. He said, don't let your hearts be troubled to the point of being distraught. He said, you believe in God, now trust me. And they held on to their trust, and it wasn't long until it was just a, a few hours and Jesus was erect, uh, arrested, but it was just three more days until he was resurrected. And then, wow, now we know why they had to trust him. We don't know when Jesus will return, but he will. Trust him today with your heart and with your life. Jesus said, because I live, you shall live also. With the only qualification being to accept his free gift of redemption paid by his death on the cross. O oh God, our help in ages past and our hope for years to come, into your tender care we commit the soul of our beloved Sean Wickersheim, thanking you for his life and service among us. We commit his earthly remains to the ground, earth to earth, ashes to ashes, and dust to dust, in the sure and certain hope that his spirit will be reunited with his new resurrected body at the coming of Jesus and joined again to his eternal spirit in the day when the dead shall hear the voice of the Son of God and they that hear shall live. We'll offer prayer and, and tonight if, uh, if you've thought about these scriptures, and you think, you know, I need to know this Jesus as the Lord of my life. You can do that. Well, I pray. Uh, you can pray in your own words, in your own heart to Jesus and say, would you come into my life? Would you change me? Would you become the Lord of my life? You can do that. Our Father, again, we thank you for Sean. We thank you for the difference he made in this world. I thank you, Lord, for the promise of heaven and eternal life. I pray for Jeff and Rhonda, Ben, and Sam, and all of the Wickersheim family today. Lord, there will be hurts, there will be tears. There will be days when Sean is missed terribly. And I pray that you will surround the Wickersheim family with your love, with your strength, with your comfort, and lead them day by day, knowing that Jesus loves them. Remind them often how much you love them, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen.